I call on Government Orders of the Day numbers 1 and 2. New Zealand Flag re Referendum Bill Committee Stage. And, and, and Appropriation 2015-16 Estimates Bill. I declare the House in committee for consideration of the New Zealand Flag Referendums Bill and for further consideration of the Appropriation 2015-16 Estimates Bill. Mr Chairman. Mr Speaker. Members, the House and Committee for consideration of the New Zealand Flag Referendums Bill and for further consideration of the Appropriation 2015-16 Estimates Bill. Members, we turn first to the New Zealand Flag Referendums Bill and the question is that part one stand part. This is debate on clauses three to nine. Mr Chair. I call Jacinda Ardern. Thank you, Mr Good Chair. Um, it's my pleasure to begin the committee stage um, debate on the New Zealand flags referendum, uh, referendums bill. I know that there will be considerable um, interest from um, members, particularly on this side of this House, to uh, canvas uh, the issues that were raised by submitters that weren't able to be discussed at length by the select committee because uh, as will probably be raised by um, uh, members like, in particular, Mr Mallard, there wasn't a, a, a time made available uh, to uh, a great number, thousands, in fact, of submitters who asked to be heard by the select committee. Um, 747 submitters, when they put forward their submission, requested to be heard by the committee. Labor agreed they should be given the option of being heard that was voted down at, uh, by other members How of the select committee. Um, so we intend to, on their behalf, fully canvass the issues that they raised, given that there was um, uh, that that was not an option made available um, to them. Uh, Mr. Um, Speaker. A range of views were brought before the select committee on the issue itself of the current flag. But let us be absolutely clear. What we are debating today is not whether or not we personally prefer the current flag or whether we would like a new flag to be considered. Mr Mallard began his submission, in fact, in front of the select committee by saying it was his personal opinion that we should have a new flag. I personally believe a new flag would be no bad thing. That does not mean the process or the timing that this government has chosen is correct. In fact, we have strongly been of the view that both the money uh, that has gone towards this process, the uh, process itself and the way that the referendum is framed, and I'm going to come to that in the purpose clause, is incorrect, uh, and indeed the timing, given the number of competing demands that we have as a House right now, again makes it inappropriate also. So this is not about our personal preference for a flag. This bill is very much about the process by which we go about putting the issue before New Zealanders and indeed whether that issue should be put at all. Um, Mr Speaker, I want to come to um, uh, the first clause that we are able to debate in this stage of the bill and that is um, clause um, number part one, clause three. As with any bill, that's the point at which the purpose of this bill is set out. Um, for the many, um, many listeners and viewers at home, the purpose clause for this bill states that the purpose of this Act is to make provision for two postal referendums to be held to enable electors to decide whether New Zealand should have a new flag and to provide for a change of the New Zealand flag if, New Z if electors decide New Zealand should have a new flag. Now, Mr Speaker, Labor's opposition goes to the heart of this purpose clause. We have always stipulated that if the government wanted to have 
a referendum in two stages. It should make sure that the very first question determines whether indeed the second referendum is necessary. Otherwise, we are potentially putting ourselves up for A, New Zealanders not being having the ability to voice their opinion on whether we should be going down that track in the first place, B, a potential waste of money to the tune of up to $6 million when you take into account solely the act of the second referendum and the materials that go around that, Wasteful which was spending. the advice that Wasteful we received. Spending. Now, I need to put that into context, uh, Mr Chair. Um, that the $6 million is just simply for the act of the second postal referendum and the materials that go with it. This entire process has ballooned to $26 million. Yeah. If we, $26, $9 million have already been spent and we haven't even asked anyone anything yet. And why is that? Well, members in this House will know they will have got all of the glo glossy brochures. $4 million was spent on the kinds of brochures and advertising that our officers received. Now, I can tell I had a question in the back there, a very good question. How, what could we do with the money saved? Well, if we stopped tomorrow, we could insulate 9,000 houses. Mr Chair. Mr. Chair. Jacinda, I do. Mr Chair, thank you, Mr Chair. So, uh, it is absolutely to the heart of this purpose clause the fact that from the very beginning, the government stipulated two postal referendums. It did not say to set out a um, to set out a process to ask a question. From the very beginning, the government was very clear it wanted two postal referendums. Now, how clear were they? Well, so clear that when the committee, members of the committee, Labour members of the committee, push it to officials that perhaps we should look at an alternative option, uh, as set out in the regulatory impact statement, uh, that would have again saved a bit of money by restructuring. We were told that we were already too far down the track of the two ballot option. What? And before the select committee, or indeed parliament, had even passed this bill. Now this, Mr Speaker, let me be very clear. I do not for a moment challenge officials on that. I do not blame them. I do not believe personally that it is um, with any ill intent that they had progressed as they had. Because why did they do it? They had very clear instructions from the government that they wanted this done quickly and that they had a very set idea about how they wanted it done. So set that in the regulatory impact statement, um, when first initially canvassing, postal ballot, a standalone ballot or an online electronic ballot, the regulatory impact statement says a, a referendum is vote by um, all enrolled um, uh, voters on a matter. It canvassed whether or not it would be online or held with a general election and it stated we have not considered holding a ballot together with a general election due to the Prime Minister's indication that the process should, not be, should be completed before the 2017 election. We had the option of saving an enormous amount of money by combining this process with the next general election and the Prime Minister himself made it clear he wanted it done and dusted by 2017. And why? Because this is a vanity project. That's right. This is a vanity project. Right. If this was just about if this was just about putting the option of flags before the New Zealand public, we would be spending six million, not twenty-six million. We would distill it into one referendum where we ask yes or no first, or at best two, but the first question should be. Do you want a change, yes or no? And why did the government reject that? Well, well let's, let's go through the rest. Let's go through. Let's go through. Uh, uh, let's go through then, Mr Bishop. Let's go through the reasons that were given at the select committee for why. Um, the, the committee posed, the majority of the committee, so that means national members, um, uh, said, basically said, that if the majority voted to change the flag under the petition's proposal, the second referendum would be a runoff between this current flag and the highest ranked alternative. Sounds reasonable. The majority of us recognise that if this procedure were followed, many of those who voted against changing the flag would probably not proceed to rank alternative flags. So, 
So if they choose not to rank alternative flags, that's their call. So that was their first objection. Second um, objection uh, was that um, uh, the reason stated in the um, uh, analysis at the beginning of the bill was there are a variety of reasons for this. For example, for a change of flag to occur, a majority of voters would have to vote twice for change, both in the first and second referendum, whereas those opposed to change could prevail at either referendum. So if they prevail, it's because that's democracy. If they say no at the first round, that's democracy. Listen to what the people say. And here's the kicker. Here's the kicker of a reason. A further reason against the proposal is that placing a first-past-the-post vote on whether or not the flag should be changed alongside a preferential vote could cause complexity and confuse voters. That's the real reason. The National Government tried to claim that having two options in one ballot was too confusing for New Zealand voters. The New Zealand public are How not arrogant. idiots. They are not idiots. They absolutely could have coped with that option and they would have saved millions by doing it. In fact, thousands of voters asked for the government to do that. Before you show us your range of flags, ask us if we want a new flag. Ask us if we want a new flag. And the members on that side said, oh, no, 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 they can't really consider if they want a new one without seeing the alternatives. Fine. Put them in the same ballot. Ask if you want a new flag. Ask then if we were going to have a new flag, which of these would you like? Simple. New Zealanders would have understood that. Now, if you disagree, Mr Naylor, stand up and tell me that you think New Zealanders are stu too stupid to understand that process. I dare you to.